At this point, my friend asked me, what injectors would you put in this if this was your dad's truck? I got most of this done on Wednesday and then I got tricked into eating Taco Bell, so I had to go home. But uh, the main fuel table is done. Timing hasn't changed since last time. So today I think we're going to make sure it starts up good and then gonna work on some of the like acceleration enrichment. And then I'm gonna drive around for a little while and make sure all of the weird, unnecessary problems all went away. What you know about switching lanes, holding wood I tuned this truck, I don't know, probably like a year ago and everything went good and it ran good for a while and then it started having some problems. It started burning up O2 sensors almost daily, just kind of generally running like crap, misfires, the usual. A longtime friend of mine and his dad own this and they build a ton of nice stuff and they've done multiple really nice C10s. So they're definitely not new to this. They replaced all sorts of stuff trying to hunt down the problem. This almost sounds weird to say, but eventually they were sort of lucky enough that one of the injectors just stuck wide open. And I just say lucky because that made it a lot easier to kind of identify the problem. Thank you very much. Dead giveaway. So anyways, they replaced all eight injectors with a brand new set of the same injectors. And then after that, the truck ran better, but it still did a bunch of weird stuff. And the way it was explained to me is that it sort of acted as if it just needed to be retuned. They brought the truck back to me and as they kind of told me the, the story of, you know, how all of the events leading up to this point went, even though the car was there in my shop, I actually suggested that they take it back home, uh, they do live pretty close, and buy a set of nice injectors to put in the truck. They already paid me to tune it once. I didn't want them to have to pay me to tune it again. And then after that, we decided to put new injectors and then they'd have to pay me, you know, a third time. So I suggested that we just go ahead and did the injectors now and avoided any potential problems. Before I start this up and we check out the cold start, I'll just kind of show you where I left off uh, yesterday before I had to race home. Uh, you can look at uh, this log here and look at our close up correction. Uh, these injector, like before, it, I'd say a tune like a normal car. Maybe it's a little more finicky than normal, uh, but after changing the injectors, uh, this was like the easiest car ever. Uh, the part throttle and stuff took next to no time. Uh, the full throttle uh, was nice and easy. And uh, if you let's see here, if you look uh, right here, we're only about 40% injector duty cycle on this. Uh, we're mounting like seven or eight pounds. You can look the blue here; it's kind of tapering off. So it hits like nine pounds, but it's like seven pounds out, you know, at max RPM or whatever. Uh, and it's making, you know, just shy of 600 horsepower. So uh, this is just like an awesome combo for this truck. But since we're only 40% injector duty cycle, I tried a whole bunch of end angles to see if there was just, you know, anything there. Uh, if you look down here at the bottom, you can see I made multiple runs all in uh, one, you know, one log or whatever, but uh, swinging it from, basically all the way positive, all the way negative, and you know, multiple uh, spots in between. Uh, the graphs overlaid each other 110%. There was literally no change. So that was a huge waste of time, but there's something about spending the time doing that and trying it that just feels right. So uh, when we have duty cycle low enough and the thing's gone well enough up to that point, uh, then I'll try and spend some time playing with some additional things. Uh, so if we just click through this, uh, you can see where closed loop correction is basically nothing. Uh, so the, the boost dropping off, well, that kind of sucks, but it has a manual boost controller on it, so there's nothing that I can do about that. And yeah, other than that, like I said, it, it runs great. So let's go ahead and start this up and make sure our cold start is good to go. And by cold start, it's, uh, you know, 410 degrees in here today. So the coolant temp's probably, uh, you know, 200 degrees before we even start the thing for the first time. But I don't suspect the cold start's going to be far off uh, just because it's run so good up to this point. At this point, my friend asked me, what injectors would you put in this if this was your dad's truck? So they ended up going with a set of Injector Dynamics 1050X injectors, which is absolutely what I would put in my dad's truck and it's what I run in my personal car as well. So probably about a half an hour after they installed the injectors uh, without me even tuning it yet, just kind of giving them some injector data to plug in. They let me know that it seemed like all of the issues had already gone away. I've been using Injector Dynamics almost exclusively for probably the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years or something crazy. Sometimes if Injector Dynamics doesn't offer what we need, uh, we will use uh, Fuel Injector Clinic injectors as well. 
Uh, for those of you who are part of my Holly EFI training program, you get 10% off as Fuel Injector Clinic is one of many sponsors offering our members a discount. So if you want a discount on a bunch of parts and you want to learn how to tune your Holly EFI system yourself, click the first link in the description. Something weird is going on with my computer. Well, I don't know if it's my computer or if it's the software, but there's like a lot of things that, like the buttons where you would click to toggle like left or right, they're just gone. So you just have to kind of guess where they are. So there's no icon and you're literally clicking on nothing, but it still works. I've never run into that before. Should probably just restart my computer, probably fix everything. All right, so let's start this up. Now what's interesting is previously, I don't know if it was the O2 sensors themselves, if something else that they changed corrected it, or if it was the injectors, uh, but this had that problem that uh, I've seen on a bunch of different Terminator X cars where the O2 sensor will just read uh, dead lean for the first, you know, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds or whatever. Uh, but ever since it's come back this time, everything, like the sensor's reading normal. So I wish they only changed one thing so we could kind of help pinpoint that a little bit. Well, let's see how it starts. get in 
and third gear are going to hold the dyno about 2,000 RPM and uh, give it some throttle. I'm going to log it and if there's anything noteworthy then we'll take a look at it. So cruising our air fuel is right on the money. So let's see what happens when we give it some throttle. Uh, now this isn't automatic obviously so the converter is going to flash. This is in my opinion well both easier and harder depending whether it's manual or automatic but just in different ways touch up anymore on the street we'll do that uh, there's a little bit more correction going on hard throttle than there was yesterday but uh, it's really close and uh, I'm gonna drive around on the street a little bit so again if any corrections need to be happened like from where it's currently at I'll just make that decision based off of what it does out on the road all right I think I'm gonna probably make one or two full throttle runs just to play with timing a little bit so this isn't highly specific I see this with all sorts of different ECUs where people think that they bought you know XYZ ECU so they have to buy every single component from that manufacturer thinking that you know all the items are gonna work better together or something which does make all of the sense in the world but it's usually not ideal Look at boost control solenoids, for example. Every company on earth is using Mac valves, but they all just put you know, their brand of sticker on them and then sell them for three times the price. I absolutely get that not everybody has endless money, but when you're dealing with electronic fuel injection and you just spend a bunch of money on an ECU and you're either gonna spend a bunch of time or a bunch of money or both on tuning, it's extremely important that you use a set of high quality fuel injectors. Otherwise, everything else, it's kind of all for nothing. The best ECU in the world and the best tuning in the world is all gonna become worthless if the actual fuel injectors aren't any good. So if you're on a tight budget, save some money on other parts of the build. The fuel system is the number one place that you don't want to use anything other than the highest quality components. My rule of thumb when it comes to fuel system components is just to use items from companies that just make fuel system components. Who do you think is gonna make a better fuel pressure regulator? A company that only makes fuel system components or a company that makes 33,000 other different components, likely doesn't even make their fuel pressure regulator and just you know rebrand something from China and puts their logo on it and puts it in their box. Okay. You still come up, bro? When it comes to the fuel injectors themselves, I prefer the companies that exclusively do fuel injectors or maybe a fuel components that essentially work in conjunction with their fuel injectors. In the case of this truck, like I you know, kind of said from the beginning of this, is I don't think it was a money thing. I think it was just simply not knowing any better. So hopefully this video can help some of you at least ask some questions in regard to your fuel system components before just firing up your credit card and ending up with something that is going to make you end up hating your car. A piece of shit car. I'm going to try just a little bit of timing because why not? 1400 degrees outside so I don't really suspect it's going to uh, make any more power but we'll see. I 
mean, picked up like not even 10 horsepower. I think it was like eight or nine. Uh, so here's where I had it last time was right where I want it. So I'm gonna put the timing back, probably unbolt it and take it out on the road. Not bad for basically seven pounds. It made a little bit more power last time I was here because we turned the boost up a little bit more, but at this point he just wants to drive it and enjoy it, not work on it anymore. All right, time to get this thing off of the dyno. So it runs good. Uh, I've been playing with the uh, TPS uh, rate of change blanking. Basically right off of like no throttle to giving it some throttle. It's way better now. So I've been driving around, it's like 700 degrees in here. Uh, I've been driving around for a while and um, it drives great. I will say the only thing that seems a little bit suspect is before it starts building boost, it just maybe feels a little, a little more unresponsive than I would like. Uh, but I've moved timing and fueling around uh, every which direction and nothing that I have control over is making any sort of a difference. So unfortunately, I think it just kind of, uh, it is what it is. I'm trying to drive it in essentially any different way I can think of uh, to make sure that it's not gonna have any problems. I was instructed that, I asked if there was any like particular thing to look out for and I was just told that you'll know it when it does it. And uh, I, don't, I haven't noticed anything wrong. So I think we are in the clear. Looks like they have all the stuff in place to put air conditioning in this, and uh, it definitely needs it. This, uh, <laughs> you can tell it's missing that for sure. This damn truck, I said this last time I had this car, is you can't, it's like every third car that you pass, everyone's waving out the window and, uh, you know, throwing a fit. I think, uh, you know, this, this thing definitely is like a, driving in a Lamborghini. It's, first it's kind of uh, entertaining but it's almost gotten to the point where it's starting to get annoying honestly think this is like the perfect amount of power for this truck it's like just enough for it to have fun but without it like trying to spin the tires everywhere and it makes all the right noises stupid so we're gonna consider it good here's the loan table after 45 minutes half hour 45 minutes of driving so it looks like we had a couple percent but outside of that everything looks good to go gonna make a couple little quick tweaks park this inside and then I'm gonna go home and jump inside of my freezer